Hello, I have a very interesting video here. I'm going to hope to keep it short. So I finally finished my uh, Crunchberry Game Boy Color mod. Uh, it uses an, an aftermarket shell I got off of eBay like a year and a half or two years ago. And uh, brand new buttons. These came from, I believe the buttons came from Handheld Legend, whereas the membrane for Start Select came from RetroModding.com. And there is a matching ring in there. It's kind of diffused by the blue, but I did that intentionally. I think that also came from RetroModding. Uh, so before I do a comparison with my old mod, here is the new mod. This game is notoriously hard to play uh, because of the tilt mechanic. One of the best uh, features of this IPS screen is that it has an optimal viewing angle no matter what, so it makes a game like Kirby Tilt and Tumble actually playable for once. Uh, as you can see, it's not like getting awkwardly dim or something at weird angles, which is fantastic. This is the brand new IPS screen. It just came to the market maybe four months ago, five months ago, and it uses a, a similar sort of mathematical scaling. I think it's four times, uh, so it's like a perfect pixel ratio, all that fun stuff. So it looks like a proper Game Boy Color, just cleaner. On the original GBC screen, you can see the lines in between each pixel, and I, I kind of like that look, but at the same time, that's, that's pure nostalgia. This is a pure digital signal with a much higher resolution screen. So this is kind of how, maybe even how the devs saw it on their computers. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know that kind of stuff. Either way, Kirby's actually playable now. Not one-handed. Um, I don't know if you guys could see that, but on darker screens... I'm going to pop in another game here. Made it a little easier to show off the problem. This uses a, a CPU 05 motherboard, um, so it does not have the double speed line squiggle issue that you may or may not know about. So I've got my actual legit copy of Shantae here. Please don't rob me. I know it's worth a lot of money nowadays. Um, But there's something I, I particularly want to show off here. Do you see the light bleed in the lower corners of each side of the screen? Not, not the ones through the shell, but on the screen itself. Right there. Great example. Um, I'm pretty sure that's just because I'm using a clear shell. If I were to use a solid colored shell, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't have that issue. It is not an issue with the screen itself. It's the edges. It's actually this bleeding through that way. Um, so that's a fault of my, my shell that I chose, and I could have taken a sharpie on the inside and fixed that. I didn't even think about it, and I don't want to open this sucker up again. So, um, this one also has a touch panel right there in the corner it will not focus on. There, it kind of goes. Uh, it's a touch-sensitive panel to change the brightness. So it goes up a couple notches, and then it goes down. That looks way better on the film. Look at that. But um, you can see how clean that looks, even from different angles. It looks like it's flickering a little on the screen, but I'm pretty sure it's just the refresh rate. But you can see the colors are at least consistent. Now, let's pop this sucker on my old one. Now this is my older mod. I did maybe a year ago, year and a half ago. This uses a Midwest embedded screen, uh, which was, at the time, brand new to the market. I think it was like June or July last year. Um, it is the same, pretty much the same thing as the McWill screen that everybody uses. Uh, it's a little bit cheaper, but the reason I bought it is because it has a black bezel, whereas the McWill has a silver one. It works exactly the same way, though. However, this one has an optimal viewing angle issue. So not only is the picture smaller, you can see uh, it's kind of like purplish if you tilt down. It's more even lighting, but again, I think that's just because of this is a smaller screen. And it doesn't get nearly as bright, but it does have brightness controls. So you can see it's got this weird 
discoloring and it's based on the angle that you're looking at there is definitely a sweet spot otherwise it looks kind of purple but uh, it like in person it's not showing up well on the, on the camera but in person it is looking like the correct colors but again it's only at certain angles um, maybe not the best example to show off Anyway, the reason I bought the IPS screen was, one, to correct that issue because it really ticked me off, two, to have a full-size screen, and three, uh, was to have that, that even viewing angle. Like, it, it's great no matter how you look at it. The only real problem is that light bleed, but I really don't want to open this thing again. This is like a four-month project, like, just because it's so hard to find Game Boy Colors these days, and I kept breaking things, and... It's just been one pain after another, after another, after another. But it's finally done. Yeah, that's how it should look. That's a lot better. Um, so yeah, this is my berries and cream. Or crunch berries. We call it crunch berries, that's right. Um, my husband came up with that one. Crunch berries. I don't really have a name for this guy, though. But this was my go-to for a while. Um... Now that I have a much improved screen, I don't know if I'm going to keep this one, but I did put a lot of effort into it, and I consider this a done project, even though I broke the LED on it. I just, I've had so much trouble with this particular one that I don't want to go back into it. Um, but before I go, I want to show off one last thing. I make these nice little boxes for all my games. Shoutouts to the cover project. They've been a lifesaver for the last decade. So what I want to show here is something interesting. I'm going to turn the volume down a little bit. Um, oh, the volume dial is very stiff. I need to fix that. Um, on Link's Awakening, it is a what what's called a double speed game it has it runs at double the clock speed of your standard uh game boy game and it just will not focus on that um on this particular screen this ips screen if you're using any motherboard other than cpu 05 or 06 the right line vertical line right there is going to have noise in, in the signal. It's going to flicker random colors on just that, that right row of pixels, just that single column. Uh, whereas here, this is a 05 board. The one I, I broke was a 06, and I was very frustrated by that. Um, but this is a 05, and it is clean. I'm getting no noise whatsoever. It was a very clean picture even if it doesn't show up properly on the camera. Turn it up a little bit on the brightness. In person, it really does look a gem. It looks fantastic. The colors are bright, not too saturated, not too um, blocky, I guess. Um, it looks as it should, as, as like everybody wished they had back in the 90s. There were so many rumors going around the schoolyard during Pokemon of, uh, oh, you can get a backlit Game Boy in Japan if you mod it, or you send money out, it's super expensive, like $400. They were talking about the Game Boy Lite, which I actually have one, and that is not an ideal solution for playing anything. Uh, it's good for pretty much Tetris and Pokemon, that's about it. Uh, it the refresh rate is so low that it... it will really hurt your eyes unless you're playing in pitch darkness. Um, but this is the dream. We are finally, here in 2020, we are finally living the dream. A full uh, 4X scale, full size screen, no screen tearing, no blur, nothing crazy going on. It is, it's damn near perfect. It would be perfect if it weren't for that light bleed, but again, I'm pretty sure that's my fault for using a see-through shell and not thinking about that beforehand. Um, it was kind of a, uh, it wasn't a hard job to do, really. It was just annoying that I couldn't find the parts for the longest time. 
um, cause I want to make sure I had the, the exact right board to avoid that squiggle on the right. Uh, very few games, uh, have that problem. Uh, Link's Awakening is one of them. I believe Shantae was another. And, uh, Crystal? Pokemon Crystal? Pretty sure. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure on that one. But yeah, um... Final thoughts, I think this mod is absolutely worth doing. The part alone is about $50, $55, depending where you buy it from. Uh, with this Corona thing, it can be kind of hard to get it, I'm sure. Especially because you, um, for example, retromodding.com, you uh, have to import from Canada. So it can be kind of hard. Like this one, I think I had like a four-week wait time on it. Um they were having some really bad issues with customs right before this corona outbreak happened. And so that's part of the reason it took so long to get this project going. Um, but it's absolutely worth doing. You just have to trim the shell on the inside a little bit. Um, I don't recommend using this crappy $10 shell off eBay because I it has been nothing but sorrow for me. Uh, use one that's actually done by Retromodding or Handheld Legend or something like that or use an official one. Um, you just have to trim a little bit of plastic over the D-pad's ring on the inside, and then just on the inner bezel uh, to make the screen fit. And then it comes with these 3D printed uh, spacers, so it's lined up properly, like you cannot screw that up at all. And then from there it's just making sure... Oh yeah, the hard, hard part here was um, the little window for the IR sensor. You have to very carefully scrape off an edge to make it fit because it's so snug up here. <laughs> I had a really hard time getting it to fit in there, and I ended up cracking one, but luckily I have spares, because I always have a billion parts of random stuff lying around, because I don't throw anything away because I'm a hoarder. And um, I managed to get it down with a um, craft knife that I use for cutting things very precisely. Uh, it was a pain in the butt, but I got it. Um, oh yeah, it's got the matching switch. Ta-da! So that, that's my Crunchberry Game Boy Color. Uh, IPS screen, 9.99999 out of 10. Um, it'd be nice if it was smaller, so that I wouldn't have to cut so much. Uh, it'd be nice if I didn't have that light bleed issue, period. Uh, like on the Midwest Embedded slash McWill slash whatever screen. Um, but the viewing angle is fantastic. The colors are perfect. I don't notice any issues with, with uneven pixel ratios. Um, I did have an issue of screen tearing in Shantae, but I think that's just how Shantae is because it, it, it's not the best optimized game for the system. Um, fun fact, in the boss fights, you can keep getting hurt by the boss after you've defeated it if you've managed to do a certain trigger. Every one of them. It, it's pretty crazy. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, my A button is a little bit squishy. It still functions, it just doesn't have a good feedback anymore, and it's because of that spacer. Uh, it's pushing down on the membrane just ever so slightly there. Uh, so it, it, in the future, I would really like to see these screens improve to the point where they are smaller um, and just easier to put in. Like right now, this one did not require any soldering whatsoever. This one did. Uh, and this is only a year old. At, at the time that I did this one, that was top of the line. Uh, that was like the godsend in this this realm of modding Game Boy Colors. It's been a pipe dream for all of us since Pokemon first came out in 98. Uh, to play with a properly lit screen, it was such a pain back in the day using worm lights and all that. And so this last year and a half or so, there have been several uh, fan-made, uh, community-created uh, screen projects. Uh, ben Ben's got one. Um, of course, McWill is the famous one, the popular one, the cool kid one. Um, it's just been a boon. Like, it's totally revitalized the Game Boy Color scene, and as anybody who grew up with it knows, it's a different experience to play a, a Game Boy or Game Boy Color game on an actual GBC rather than a GBA. It just looks a lot cleaner. It's not nearly as blurry. The colors are more accurate. It, it's how it was meant to be. Um, so it's been... The SP was, was also a godsend when it was made, but this is 
this has been life changing for the Game Boy Color community, and it's only getting better and better. I mean, a year ago, this was the top of the line design, and it's small, it's not got perfect viewing angles, n nothing like that. Brightness controls required soldering. Now you have a drop in kit that is so much better. It's so much cleaner, such a brighter picture, uh, more even lighting, even colors, ac more accurate colors, and no soldering required. You just have to trim a lot of plastic. Um, so I'm excited to see where this community is going and what the future holds for the Game Boy Color in particular as far as modding goes. Um, but for now, I'm going to thoroughly enjoy my Crunchberries Game Boy Color and maybe get back to Pokemon Crystal. Thank you for watching.